Hello and welcome to Zanata Consulting's Beginner Series. Um, in this video, we're going to cover a specific type of flow that we find ourselves creating quite often. Um, the flow is going to use a webhook as a trigger, and then it's going to send some data over to the CRM. Um, before we do jump in, I want to ask if you find this video useful, uh, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Um, that really does help us out and it'll make sure that you don't miss any videos in the future as we continue to post tutorials just like this one. So in this video, kind of in more detail here, uh, we're going to go through creating a flow that's based on a webhook. Um, so a webhook is pretty much a standard way to send data um, from one application to another. Um, oftentimes, the reason that you'd be looking to use a webhook um, rather than kind of building an entire API integration is either for very simple, um, simple integrations where, you know, you're just sending some kind of raw data, um, you know, you don't need to do anything too fancy. Um, the other option or times where you might find yourself using webhooks is if one of the systems that you're using um, doesn't have the ability to kind of authenticate an API and, you know, store client secrets and client IDs or really work with OAuth um, authentication. So oftentimes you might find that it's simpler to say, well, if this external application can just post a standard kind of webhook, um, then Zoho can kind of take care of the rest using Zoho Flow. So we've started here by creating a flow and we'll go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call it our example webhook to lead. And I'll create that here. Um, now in a previous video, we kind of walked through all the different types of triggers that you may choose, whether that's triggering on an action in a particular app, um, running this on some type of schedule or cycle, um, and then lastly, kind of sending data through a specific webhook URL. Um, so in this case, I'll go ahead and set this up with a webhook URL here. Now, what it's gonna do first is gonna ask us what type of payload we're gonna use. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna be using JSON. Um, you know, this is kind of gonna depend on where you're sending the data from, um, but it can parse through either JSON, form data, or plain text. Um, for this example, we're going to use JSON because that's kind of the most standardized and ubiquitous method for sending the data. Now, down here below is where it's actually going to give us the webhook URL. Um, so this is where you are sending the data to. So you'll see it looks pretty much like a standard kind of URL here, other than this big giant key that gets added. And that's basically like the password, right? So wherever the data is coming from, it's only going to have this massive key if we provided it to them. So it's important to note that this is not as secure as doing a proper OAuth integration directly into Zoho. Um, so for stuff that's very, very proprietary or that contains any, you know, really, really private data, um, you, you would not want to use a webhook like this. Again, this is really for kind of like simple, you know, incoming leads from one of your sources type of data. Um, to actually test out the webhook and kind of feed in the parameters that we're going to use, um, I'm going to go ahead and use you know, everybody's favorite tool here called Postman. So I'm going to copy this URL, and I'm now going to bring Postman up into the window. Um, you could do this in a lot of different tools. Um, you could test this in the actual system that's going to be posting the webhooks. Um, you could test it in a coding environment. Um, for me, I'm going to test it in Postman because it's very simple um, and it kind of gets us through that part of this walkthrough, which is really just seeing what the data looks like when it is sent to the webhook. So here inside of Postman, I've dropped in the URL that we're going to send to. Um, these are always going to be done with a post, not a put. So if you are the one kind of building this on the external side, you're always going to want to use post. And then here I've kind of just defined a standard looking JSON payload. Right. So, you know, maybe if we're getting lead data here, we're getting a first name, right? We're getting a last name, we're getting an email and a phone. So, like times when you would get this type of data is maybe you're a real estate agent, 
um, and you have a referral partner, right, who wants to send you some leads, and you decide that, hey, rather than emailing this to us, could you just post a webhook and that'll add it directly to our CRM and kind of get it into our outreach process. Um, this could also be something in the vein of, you know, if you were in professional services and you had existing clients and you wanted to give them some type of web form that they could fill out to send you referrals, um, you know, you could route all that through a similar system like this using webhooks. Um, so now that I've dropped in our URL and I've defined the payload for this integration where the payload is basically the parameters and the data in those parameters, um, I'll go ahead and go to our next page. And so the first thing that Flo is going to want you to do here is actually send it some data. So it wants you to test the endpoint. Oops, looks like I clicked twice there. Um, so it's going to want us to test the endpoint. So now I have it ready to test. And then over here on the Postman side, I'll go ahead and just click Send. And now it's sent in our data. Um, this is a really important first step. So the first thing you're always going to want to do as you start building these out is actually get whatever app is going to send data to send it through while you're looking for the test. It does a few important things. Um, it allows you to make sure that the data comes through correctly. So here we'll see it's, it's interesting. It came through in a different order than we had it. That's not going to matter, right? It doesn't matter that phone is first and you know first name is third. No big deal. We don't care about that at all. The things that you're looking for here are totally missed parameters. Um, maybe you have a more complicated set of data that's going to come through, like you're including a list or kind of like internal structures in your data. Um, this will give you the ability to see, hey, it kind of missed this section here. Maybe I need to tweak my formatting. Otherwise, though, once we see that our payload has come in successfully here, uh, we're ready to go ahead and move to the next step. So kind of keeping in this line of wanting to create a lead um, once this webhook comes in, um, now that we've kind of locked in our parameters and we know that when we do post the data, it's actually going to show up over here inside of Zoho Flow, um, now we're ready to actually start building the integration that we want. So over here on the left, you know, we've got a ton of different applications that can be tied directly into Zoho Flow. Um, in this case, we're going to work with CRM. And now there's a couple ways we could go about doing this. Um, you know, you could go ahead and just send it directly through to the leads module. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to work through, I think, a, a better way to do this that, um, you know, is worth kind of walking through. So when you're receiving data through Flow, you have a lot of options. Um, it's not like you're just everything has to go straight to leads or has to go straight to one module. So in this case, what I kind of want to do is I want to check if they already exist as a contact, right? Maybe this is someone that we're already doing business with, or this is someone that we didn't win a deal with a year ago, and now they're back for some reason. And so we don't really want them to end up being duplicated. Um, so what we can do is actually go down the list here, and first we'll try to fetch a contact. Right, because if they used to be a lead and then they were converted, they'll now exist as a contact. So we're going to look there first. Um, it's asking me here to connect with Zoho CRM. So I'll go ahead and just do that here. This just pulls up the ability to do an OAuth. So this piece here, where we're connecting Zoho Flow to Zoho CRM, this is the most complicated part of most custom integrations. Um, so being able to just click through and now we're OAuth and we're good to go is a huge time saver when you're building integrations. And so now here, it's basically going to ask me, what should I look for to determine if a contact already exists? Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the email. So now if we kind of look through our flow step by step, so step one is that the webhook is going to be sent over to Flow, where it will be read into first, last, email, and phone. Then we're going to go ahead and look for an existing contact. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is add a branch, because two things can happen here. Either we do have a contact, or we don't. 
And based on if we do or don't, we kind of want to take different actions. So over on the left-hand side under logic, I'm going to drag in a, de a decision here. And we'll create a condition. So what I'm looking for is let's make a condition first for if the contact exists. So if the contact exists, then parameters in the contact won't be empty when it comes back. Now you could choose a variety of different parameters. It technically doesn't matter. We're going to choose contact ID because it will never be empty for a contact that exists. So here we're going to say if contact ID is not null, then that's going to be one of our branches. Now you could also use just the default here. If they don't exist, they'd go down the default path. Just to be thorough, we're going to go ahead and add two branches so that we can give them both names. So now this is the case where it's searched for a contact based on email and no ID came back. So no contacts have that email. And so here you can kind of decide what you want to do in these two different cases. Um, in the case where a contact already exists, Maybe you'd want to go down this flow and have it create a task right, associated to that contact. Or maybe you'd want it to send an email to the contact owner. right? All of those different actions would be necessary here if the contact does already exist. Um, for the purposes of brevity in this demo, I'm going to show you the path where a contact does not exist. So I'll go back down here to the Zoho CRM section. And I can now create or update a lead. Um, you will notice as you kind of play around in flow, there's more than one way to get where you're going. So I could create a module entry, right? Um, and that could do the same thing as you know creating or updating a lead. Or I should say I could create or update a module entry versus create or update a lead. I'm going to use the create and update a lead here because it will use the email natively to determine if it needs to create or update that record. So now I've dragged in our create or update lead, and it's going to ask me to basically add in any of the fields that I want to put into any of the specific fields. Um, now there's an important thing to keep in mind here. So let's say I want to add last name as part of the data that's going to create this lead. So I can go ahead, no problem. I can just open this up on the right-hand side under our webhook and grab last name, drop that right in. Now, an important thing to keep an eye on when you're doing this, and this is just, it's a mistake that everybody makes, that's why I highlight it, um, is that if you have something like this where you've attempted a fetch, and now if that fetch comes back empty, I wanna create a record or create a lead, you just want to be careful that you don't accidentally pull like first name from in this contact fetch because it's empty. There is no contact yet. So you just need to be careful about where you're pulling all your data from as you go through and set up these flows. So here, you know, I've mapped our last name. I've mapped our first name. Um, I'll go ahead and put in the phone and I'll put in the email. Um, now, other things that you can do here is you can always drop in um, just hard-coded or text parameters that aren't going to reference your webhook. So in this case, um, you know, we don't have a company in here. It's required in the system. I'm just going to put example company. You know, other things that you could think about is if you knew that all leads coming through this were all going to be from external referrals, right? You could just code in the lead source here rather than needing it to be part of your parameter. Um, you could say that all of these leads are going to come in under not contacted, right? Because obviously they're new. We haven't touched them yet. And so on and so forth here, right? So you can kind of either pull from your data that's coming in from your payload, or you can just set default values and kind of do it that way. And both of those are going to get you to the same place. So now we've kind of mapped the fields here for our lead. Um, again, if we wanted to go down the path of what needs to happen when a contact exists, it would probably look something like update the contact and then create a task, right? Just to make sure that um, everything is coming through properly. Um, for us here, what we're going to do next is actually just run a test. 
So I'm over here in our CRM. I'll open up our leads, which is just full of example data right now. I'll go ahead and turn this on. Um, you can use this debug tool, but it runs it anyways. Um, it's important to know that it doesn't actually like not do the actions. Um, it also doesn't give you as much information as just running it and looking at the history does. So even though you do have this ability, um, it's not better than just testing it live, um, especially when you're kind of looking at it, right? You can delete any records that have been generated and kind of make sure there's no long-term effects as you're running any tests. So now over here in our history, we'll see, you know, this flow is on, but it's never been run. Um, so I'll go ahead and send our data again. Sometimes it'll take just a moment to show up on the flow side. In this case, it was very, very quick. So here we can see in our log that the webhook was received. We see that we searched for the contact based on you know, fake email at zanata.com, but the output of that was nothing, right? It didn't find a contact that had that email matched. Then it went through our decision where our criteria are contact ID is or is not null. It decided contact does not exist because again, our fetch came up empty. And then lastly, now that it's decided there is no contact, it moved on to go ahead and create our lead. And so here you can see any of the specific fields that were mapped to any or any of the data that was mapped to the fields in the CRM. And then on the output side here, we get to see kind of what it looks like and um, what ended up happening in the CRM. So now on the CRM side, I'll go ahead and give this a refresh. We'll see that there is one new lead in here that came in just directly through our flow. It has all the data that we included um, and you know made it over to the CRM with no problem at all. So kind of as a summary here, uh, webhooks are a super useful and kind of easy to stand up way uh, to get data from outside of Zoho into Zoho. Um, Zoho Flow is really the only application in Zoho where you can just create an endpoint or create a webhook um, ad hoc. Um, if you wanted to go directly to CRM, you'd have to kind of use the real OAuth integration and you'd have to get them developer console access and, you know, a lot more kind of involved. Um, and so these webhooks provide a quick and easy way um, to give a place for something outside of Zoho to send data to Zoho, which then we can determine what we want to do with it once we have it in our environment. Again, I really do hope that this video is useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you've run into anything doing things like this with Flow, uh, please do go ahead and leave those down below. Uh, we try to answer as many of questions as we can on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. And again, if you did find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe. That really, really helps us in the mysterious YouTube algorithm, and it'll make sure that you see videos that we post in the future. Thanks again for watching.